Hello and welcome back to a special edition of GNAT TV's in-depth series. I'm Andrew McKeever, the news director at GNAT TV's news project, and it's a pleasure to have you with us today on Monday, April 12th. It's also a great pleasure to, today to be joined by two of our area legislators who are here to bring us up to speed and what's been going on in the virtual state house uh, this session so far. Really pleased to have with us today Representative Kelly Payala, who uh, represents the towns of uh, Jamaica, Windhall, Londonderry, Weston, and Stratton, and Representative David Durfee, who represents the towns of uh, Shaftesbury and parts of Sunderland. Uh, Kelly, David, great to have you with us today. Thank you uh, very much for making the time for this conversation. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I just thought to kind of get us started here, um, there's so many issues uh, in play. Uh, I, I, when I was sitting down last night to kind of uh, make up my list of topics to talk about, I didn't have any problem coming up with about 10 or 12 issues that are underway, and I'm sure there's probably many, many more beyond that. But uh, I thought maybe just to kind of begin, uh, would have you both tell us a little bit about what are the kind of the top two or three issues you're following that uh, are either on your uh, committee's uh, radar or maybe ones that have a, a local resonance uh, for your uh, constituents. Uh, well, ones that you're just simply interested in because you think that they're uh, they're really important. Uh, not that everything on this list isn't important in one way or another, but uh, Representative Payala, perhaps we'll have you get us started here. What are what are some of the issues you're you're following especially closely as we uh, go into the second half here of the uh, legislative session? Yeah, sure. So I sit on House Human Services, and um, we've worked on a couple of really big things so far this session. Um, I would say the most prominent of which is the uh, child care bill, uh, which, as we all know, after the last year is going to be crucial for helping get everyone's economies open back up again. Um, and as we come to summer, having opportunities for children to be getting together safely and um, starting to reengage with one another and getting parents back in the workplace is you know, one of the best things that we can do for our, our families in this state. So um, the, the child care bill, which is um, looking at providing uh, support for um, professionals in the field um, is, is really crucial. And we are also going to be hopefully doing a study looking at long-term funding sources to expand access for child care. Um, and in the immediate for this summer, as the, the governor announced um, at last Friday's press conference, there's a, a push to create uh, summer programming for kids of all ages. Um, and in hopefully in slightly more creative ways than they currently exist or, or had existed um, by expanding funding opportunities to organizations that aren't necessarily just in schools. Um, I think we've we see in a lot of smaller rural communities that it, it isn't always uh, the school or the school district that is providing summer and after school opportunities for kids. And, and so finding ways to help fund an array of programs because the most important thing is that kids have fun, safe places to engage with one another and engage with adults who are um, able to be good uh, uh, role models for them in their lives and, and help create safe spaces. So um, the after school and summer thing is something that I've been involved in outside of just my committee. I've been um, co-chairing the after, Universal After School Task Force, uh, which started meeting in, in uh, December right before session started. And so we're looking at a little bit more long term, but what's happening this summer is a really great kickoff to what could be an expansion of um, universal after school for the state for years to come. And the, the federal money, the ARPA money that's coming is um, going to be extremely crucial in, in creating a good long-term path. So that's something that I've been spending a lot of time and energy being involved in. And, um, and I'm, I'm really, really pleased with the direction that things are going in. And I hope that communities can find ways to uh, take advantage of the funding that's going to be made available. Okay, well, Representative Durfee, over to you. Uh, what are some of the top uh, 
items on your radar screen at this point? Well, let's see. I can. Uh, I'll say a quick word or two about taxes, since that's what the committee I'm on deals with. <laughs> uh, not as fun. <laughs> not as exciting a topic maybe as uh, as, as childcare, uh, but but something obviously that we all are thinking about, um, particularly this time of year, and. Uh, we were we were pressed into action on a couple of issues that uh, were a result of decisions that Congress made. One uh, back in November of, of this past November, um, related to the PPP loans that many small businesses received uh, and, and are continuing to receive, and and then uh, secondly, just this. Uh, a month or so ago, when the uh, when ARPA passed the latest round of, of federal stimulus and relief, uh, there was a decision made there to exclude a certain a certain level of unemployment income um, from uh, from taxation for 2020. And the the challenge for for us then was to figure out retroactively how to deal with with 2020 taxes, which many people had already filed or were in the process of getting ready to, to file. Uh, we we uh, struggled for a little bit, um, heard testimony from the, from the Department of Taxes on how challenging it would be essentially to go back and rewrite forms. Um, and although many people don't no longer use the traditional paper forms, they're the software that um, that uh, folks now use TurboTax and and so forth, and the companies that prepare taxes for for people as well, uh, that would all have to be sort of rewritten and delay things even even further. So uh, we we then went ahead and decided to essentially link up with what the federal tax treatment of that unemployment income and and PPP loans as well. And, which is all uh, favorable news to Vermonters who either were the beneficiaries of one of those loans or were were uh, in a position where they had unemployment income, um, and it will it will mean not having to to wait while there are uh, changes made to any of the paperwork or the uh, to, to the software, and it will mean having having that uh, that income excluded. So that's you know good news on a financial front for for folks as well. Um, interestingly, Vermont obviously is not the only state that that is dealing with with those two issues. And apparently, our neighbors to uh, to the west, New York State, took a different route and are going to be taxing that income. And uh, Massachusetts, I think, had uh, ended up with sort of a hybrid approach based on based on your income level. Uh, so happy to be able to report those two pieces of good news. Uh, happy also to be able to report that the states. Uh, current revenue uh, is is it has been pretty strong, and this is even not taking into account anything that we are getting from the federal government through one or the other of the of the stimulus uh, packages, but just sales tax revenue, um, income tax revenue has been uh, better than better than most recently expected, and the sales tax in particular is. Um, a, a nice story to, to be able to share because the sales tax, 100% of that essentially goes into the education fund. And when we get more sales tax revenue, that means that there'll be less uh, that we need to raise through the property tax system. So for, on, the, on the statewide level. So uh, that, that story has continued to get rosier actually over the past several months. And I think when uh, we we did pass out a yield bill. Uh, it's in the Senate now. Uh, before it's finalized, there there could be yet another um, another look at that, which would bring the tax rates statewide tax rates down even even further. So so hoping to uh, to see what happens there. Um, I'll pause maybe and let you move on to another question, Andrew. If you <laughs> if you've got some. Um, well, uh, that, that certainly sounds like good news. Uh, I, I think we're all going to be happy with the, at the specter of uh, not as much pressure on the property tax. Um, it actually was one question I had uh, jotted down to talk about later if we have time. But, uh, you know, I just was wondering, um, 
listening to the governor's press conference last Friday and also tr uh, trying to follow the announcements that came out about the uh, the American Rescue Plan Act or ARPA funds, uh, I was wondering, do they come with the same kind of uh, strings attached that the original CARES Act money came with? Uh, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, was that uh, there were some restrictions on where that uh, CARES Act money could get spent and where it really shouldn't be. Uh, is, is the ARPA money kind of similarly kind of uh, boxed in or is there more discretion and flexibility on the part of the state government to uh, allocate it where they think might be the best fit? And I'll let anybody who wants to respond to that go first. I think we're still waiting to get <laughs> get more guidance, information. more guidance on on ARPA, and I, and I think um, it depends on which pot of money you're talking about. I, I think that there there's no way that there won't be um, <laughs> a laundry list of of guidelines that need to be followed in in its spending. But um, you know, I I know the the hope is with money that was being directed towards child care that there would be more flexibility than there was with CARES Act money, but we don't know quite yet what all of it will be. And, and um, I think something that's going to be important for our municipalities to pay attention to is how they will be able to spend the ARPA money that goes directly to them and we don't have a lot of solid information about those guidelines yet either. Well, while we're on the subject of child care, uh, Representative Powell, uh, I guess I wondered, uh, the bill you were talking about, was that uh, the H-171 uh, bill? It's now over on the Senate, I guess. Uh, that would be the one that would ensure that Vermont families uh, spend no more than 10% of their income on child care annually? Is that uh, it? It would not ensure that. <laughs> Uh, it's it had that uh, language in as a as a goal, um, although based on the changes that are happening to the child care subsidy system, families who are eligible for child care subsidy, when this change happens, there's a change in eligibility and there's a change in the amount of money that families will get towards their subsidy. Um, based on those changes, most families, not all, but most families that would qualify for subsidy uh, would fall around the 10% of their income range for what they would be paying for, for child care um, within the subsidy system. Uh, only 20% of families that access child care are eligible for the child care subsidy, so that does not apply to people who are who are just paying out of pocket for child care. And I think the overall goal is making that a reality for all Vermonters, not just um, people who currently qualify for subsidy. So I, that it's a goal, it's not, it does not ensure that that will happen in the, you know, next year. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, that's a good clarification there. Um, well, let me ask you uh, both about uh, what I guess probably must seem to you uh, both as uh, the big elephant in the room, and that's the question around the state pension uh, situation. Uh, a lot of discussion about that over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I guess we're now going to uh, to have another a study group kind of uh, convene over the summer and the fall and, and see... Uh, uh, if, if a plan can, can be developed that uh, will pass muster with, uh, you know, the, the, the state unions and uh, everybody else who was uh, skin in this game. But uh, I'm just wondering uh, what your thoughts were following that. I mean, a week or two ago, this was kind of uh, topic number one, it seemed like, uh, and a lot of concern about, uh, about this $5.6 billion uh, deficit, I guess, uh, although the numbers seem to keep moving around a lot, so I'm not really sure if that's precisely correct, but I guess what, uh, do, you, do you both feel like uh, okay about where that all landed up, at least for the time being, uh, or or did, was this an opportunity missed to kind of really just tackle it? And, you know, I'll jump in here. I think uh, <laughs> I'll spare Kelly having to respond, respond first. Um, <laughs> well, I would say, first of all, the, the, the uh, that's so sort of the idea on the table right now is to have a study 
committee and and that will be put in the form of a of a bill presumably and then we'll we'll look at that um although that i think even that has yet to be you know i'm sure i'm not sure how much agreement there actually is on that uh, but it would focus on looking at the governance of the of the of the plans um there's been some uh some concern i think about uh, oversight and the financial acumen of the of the folks who served on the board the boards of of those um of the three different plans that the state employees and and the teachers and the municipal employees um so it's uh it's a it's a step i think in the right direction um hopefully that everyone can agree on uh, before we wrap up in in you know later in may as far as actually dealing with the issue i i i i think that we did lose an opportunity although to be fair with just a few weeks left in the session I, i'm not sure how much we would have been able to to get done it's it's obviously a, a hot button issue for for everyone I, I think the stakeholders and the people who were who are directly affected obviously had had uh, legitimate concerns um i'm not sure the rest of the of the of the public has a a, a great grasp of what's at stake i i I'll, I'll, I'll i'm comfortable saying that because i think even i didn't have a great grasp of what was at stake a, a few months ago the legislature has certainly come up more to speed but we're, we're um a, a couple of factors that just sort of might help uh, people understand better that people are living longer and if you're on a pension plan with a defined benefit that means you collect that money longer than you would have when people didn't live as long there are fewer teachers today our population has uh school age population has declined considerably over the past 10 years and 20 years and that means fewer uh, teachers paying into the into the teacher program um the uh the returns on the pension investments have not met expectations and we all know that interest rates have been have been down for since the great recession really and it was i think probably some sense that they would uh they would grow uh, and they they just haven't we we know what we're getting from our savings accounts zilch essentially uh, so even though the stock market has been booming uh recently uh pension funds aren't invested you, you don't want to invest them in uh, in riskier funds and they tend to be more conservative conservatively invested so so n most recently the the boards have looked at the situation and said we're we're just not going to continue to get we, we we can't continue to project that we're going to get uh the kinds of returns that we've been saying we thought we could get so they lowered that expectation all of those things rolling together um uh, just have increased the uh, the accounting uh liability and and that means that uh we're having to pay more in and and at the way that the system currently works that the teachers and the state employees don't uh don't pay any more in when they when that liability grows and it all comes out of um the of the general fund and it's gotten to a point where it's it's 13% of of spending this year it's uh just astonishing uh it it can't continue to it really can't continue to grow like that it'll be it's already is squeezing out um other other ways that we would all like to be spending spending the money that we that we get in taxes and revenue so it's um it's it's a thorny issue it's not going to be an easy issue to resolve um but uh but it, it but it will have to be solved at some point or or the fund will just go it will go bankrupt and what happens if that were to happen uh i mean uh is, a, is it just a case of the state's credit rating getting badly dinged and uh borrowing costs going up in the future or i, I would uh unless kelly wants to jump in i wouldn't even want to speculate <laughs> what, yeah. what that would look like i i i i'm pretty confident mm -hmm. in saying it's not going to come to that because it would be the, the, those kinds of things and no, nobody wants that uh or, or I, I should say most people don't want that so. Mm. uh well uh yeah uh we'll certainly be following that along because it, it sure sounds like you know uh one of these situations like you said you know if 13 percent of the state's spending is going for that and that grows 
every year, then sooner or later, uh, push will come to shove. But uh, like I said, I had a long list of little topics here, and we're, uh, I just want to get a, to a few others. Uh, one, one I've been following closely has been the whole broadband question. Um, and, uh, you know, general consensus, uh, certainly over the past year or so, that we already knew broadband was a, was a, was something we needed to work on a year ago before the pandemic hit. And certainly since the pandemic, we've uh, seen between education and remote working and telemedicine and probably several other things, uh, how important uh, this is. My understanding is that uh, the bill that you folks in the House passed, I think it's uh, H360, um, set aside $150 million to upgrade broadband capacity around the state. Is that in addition to the $250 million the governor is proposing to spend out of the ARPA money that uh, the state is uh, scheduled to receive, or, or is that instead of? Uh, Kelly, I'll let you uh, address that one if you wish. Um, well, I think, you know, it's been hard to be putting numbers for money in bills with so much happening with the feds and the timing of things. So um, it may be that more money goes towards broadband than was in the, the, the bill that we passed. Um, but, you know, what the governor's plan is versus what the legislature's plan is, is often not, they often don't start off in the same place. So, um, you know, some of that I think might be changed by what guidance we get from the feds. and. Um, you know, I, I think at least there there will be a minimum that gets spent on broadband and, and any amount that can be above and beyond what the legislature has in um, that bill currently would be put to good use. So um, it's a top priority for everybody. Um, but because of the timing of when we're getting information, sometimes, you know, people are going off the best information they have at the moment. And then as more information comes down, things will, will change. And um, that's sort of, I mean, that's always the case, but it feels much more pronounced this year on every front. <laughs> that we're all doing our best to um, work with the information that we have, but knowing that it's constantly changing. Mm. The timing is, uh, is a challenge because I think Congress isn't gonna be issuing guidance until May, until end of May. May. Yeah. And that's when we'll be adjourning uh, or would normally be adjourning. Right. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe you won't be. <laughs> um, Hard to say. Why, why, when, why, I'm assuming you, uh, you folks in the, in the legislature would uh, at some point weigh in on the governor's proposals there and how to divvy up that $1 billion, more than a billion dollars. Um, I mean, will you, will you all, would that be money that would be incorporated into uh, the state budget, the the big bill, as it's called? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. That would have to be in order to uh, to unlock the, that the, that money for broadband and the other things he, he mentioned. Another thing that's uh, I think different about the, this most recent uh, uh, funding is that it doesn't all have to be spent this year mm -hmm. or within. The 12 months even i think it goes out through 2024 right kelly is that is that right yeah yeah we yeah it's three and a half years roughly to yeah uh, to spend the money so we Jeez. would uh, uh, you know i think we would all appreciate having uh guidance sooner rather than later and that you know it's out of, that's out of our hands uh, but we don't need to make decisions for the in the budget that we'll be, you know, putting together, we already have put together that we'll be, um, you know, eventually signing off on, uh, and the governor will be signing off on sometime in June, presumably. The um, uh, the governor's framework that you you mentioned that has more money in broadband, I think, is is his sort of very high level suggestion. You here's how much we might put into broadband and. It, it was a larger number than what was in 360, but uh, but I'm not sure that Act 360 looked. I'm not sure how, sure how far out that looked, and and we we might ultimately say, yeah, we we don't, we need to spend more. Or we'd like to spend more. So, um, right, yeah. 
up it's, in the air. Right, it's up in the air. Because the state yeah. needs to know how they can spend the dollars, really. And, and that's one of the challenges of what we're trying to do right now with limited information and, you know. <laughs> Right, right, because as often been said, this is a really a, one of these once in a generation or once in a lifetime uh, moments when uh, a gigantic amount of money, way more than we're used to dealing with, uh, suddenly become available to, to tackle some of these problems. Right. We just have a couple of minutes left, and I just wanted to kind of pop over to one of those other uh, problems that seem to be uh, 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 really complicated and hard to figure out, and, and that's the question around the state colleges. Uh, They've also been uh, struggling over the past couple of years, and uh, I believe uh, some of the ARPA money the governor suggested uh, might go to help out at least get them through this year. Is that is that your understanding of what uh, what may be going on, or, or where do we stand with uh, helping those colleges, uh, you know, kind of get through this year and then sort of build towards a more sustainable future? David, do you want to start that one off? Uh, yeah, although uh, I'll. Uh, I'm not sure I have too much to to say other than yes, I think that there there is money uh, both in our budget and in the governor's um, uh, large framework for for spending on education, higher higher education. Uh, the the, the uh, state college, the, the reforming the governance of the state college system is part of the uh, plan that was recently outlined. Uh, looking ahead, the that we would consolidate the the system into um, um, I think Cap Castleton and and would become part of uh, Castleton and, and what's now Northern Vermont Universities would be further consolidated. Um, CCV would continue to be its own entity. Um, so so the the intent obviously being to to save. Uh, resources by uh, by having fewer l less of an administration and r responding to the fact that there were fewer students essentially um, fewer college students coming um, out of high school and, and ready for college well a uh, really complicated question a lot of uh, a lot of variables in there for sure um, so that got us through about three or four of the things on my on my list of 12 or 13 um, Boy, uh, a lot, a lot going on uh, that you folks are uh, are dealing with uh, right now. Um, but we'll have to uh, get to the rest of them the next time we have you on the, on one of our shows here. Uh, unfortunately, we're just about run out of time here. But I just wanted to thank you both again for making the time for uh, this conversation. And uh, well, maybe we'll uh, we'll get you all together then after the session's over and. Kind of That'd be great. Have you yeah. sum things up? Uh, yeah. Where everything wound up in the end. Uh, but we'll have to leave it there for now. Uh, but it, I just want to thank again Representatives uh, Kelly Piala and uh, uh, Representative David Durfee uh, for being with us. And uh, thank you uh, for being with us as well. Hope you found the show interesting. And uh, well, we'll see you again the next time. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.